What's going on guys, Ted from Nerd Immersion here, and I have over a month, almost two at this point, of D&D Weekly updates to catch up on, so I'm just going to call this the month of December and the first half of January D&D update. There's been a ton of stuff, a new book has been announced, there's uh, a new set of minis, new games, a ton of podcasts, unearthed arcana like crazy... If you want to catch up on what's happened, if you've been out of the scene, like, well, I've been in, but kind of out for the past month, uh, or, you know, you kind of just took a break for the holidays and you want to dive back in, this is the episode for you. So stay tuned. So let's just jump right in. First of all, as a heads up to you guys, it's going to be a long one just because of the amount of stuff, but some I can skip over. They released a fighter mar uh, a fighter on Arth Arcana. There's a video on the channel. I covered that. Moving on. Force grade, uh, Force grade Giant Hunters, the lost episode. This is the final episode. It was done live. This released way back in on the 5th of December. It's already up on YouTube. I think it's on Geek and Sundry. It's on the Wizards of the Coast Twitch channel. It's available for you to go check out. It's also on Nerdist. Go check that out if you want to see the true resolution and the addition of two new characters playing races from Volo's Guide to Monsters. Reed and Kelsey uh, from Sneak Attack are on the podcast. Um, they're from the Sneak Attack podcast or on the Dragon Talk podcast. And Chris Perkins and Matt Cernet talk about negative and positive planes of the D&D cosmology. Monk. They did a Monk uh, on Arthur Arcana. There's a video on the channel. I'm actually playing the Way of the Tranquility Monk. Uh, I switched my character Droop from our Out of the Abyss campaign. Droop is now one of those if you want to see me play it in action. Long story short, a lot of healing. David Eddings is on the D&D podcast from Gearbox Software. Calls in and talks a lot about how he got into D&D late in life and how he recorded the voice of an iconic character from Borderlands and uh, how he spoke about his cousin, the fantasy author with... Uh, about his cousin, the fantasy author with George R.R. R. Martin. Before that, Lord You Should Know jumps into a pivotal moment of the Forgotten Realms history, the Sundering. It's a big, F, uh, actually it's quite an important part, just like the time of troubles and things like that in D&D history, so if you're unfamiliar, that's probably not a bad one to catch up on. They did an Arthur Kena on Paladins. There's a video on the channel about that as well. Um, Anti-Paladin, Black Guardy type stuff. There were holidays, remember those? Those were about a month ago. Here's two cards you could download uh, a little bit late for that although i guess you could download them now and save them for next year jeff griner uh of from the tome show the second longest running D, &D podcast is on dragon talk and chris uh and matt uh go over holidays and the calendar in the forgotten realms so and then they took a little bit of a break uh there was an episode of super fan builds if you're unfamiliar this is a show um, on the All Me channel, and it's basically, they build, I don't know if it's always tables, but it seems to be every episode I've watched has been a table. Um, this is a crazy gaming table, um, for a Dungeon Master, uh, it's a D&D related thing. There was also, um, I saw one a while back that was a pool table for, uh, a, a Legend of Zelda fan. So let's go ahead and click on this. It appears this treasure chest was bait for an ambush. I need you to roll initiative. Ooh, I got oh, that. Matt Mercer. I knew he was gonna be on it. 23 initiative. Um, I blast those goobers. I searched these scorched bodies for items. All right, you find a scroll wrapped closed with a ribbon. It's a good way to keep in touch with friends. It's like friends fighting monsters together. Off of here, you got some ideas flowing? Absolutely, yeah. This is good. So, so all right, well, give us a couple weeks and we'll be back, buddy. All right, great. Nice to meet D &D. you. See you soon. See you soon. Looking forward to it. Tape. Dungeon Master can put maps on. Each of the players, including the Dungeon Master, will have pull-out drawers in individual tablets to communicate with each other. And then the legs, we decided it'd be really fun to have King Hecaton, the storm giant, wrestling a giant red dragon. I think the super fan's gonna love it. Time to get my team started. 
so we'll just skip ahead a little bit. Incorporating these pieces into the sculpture will give it more detail and will shave time off of the sculpting process. The sculpture is really starting to take shape, but it's a complicated piece and impossible to cast in a standard mold. To make the casting process easier, we have to deconstruct our clay combatants and individually cast all of the dissected pieces. Dungeons and Dragons campaign has a lot of giants in it. In extraction? Pull, yeah. What? You have more work to do? I can't wait to see. Dice and miniatures, and even have a place for them to set their drinks. We wouldn't have a classic Dungeon and Dragons table without the D&D ampersand. We'll just apply to each corner. So now that we've added our I corner details really like to the table, we've chosen to take our birch a few shades darker. It's time to start staining the wood. Always applying stain with the grain of the wood so it soaks better. God, they take so, so long we when they stain stuff. I don't stain like that. box molds of all the other Have little parts on the sculpt. That I've but since we're left with this no huge brushes. detailed piece, I'm gonna do a blanket go mold there. to the clay from our negative Let's mold. see what we can get. Away, Skip ahead a little bit. And ways. we'll have a deal. We're here with our super right. fan of Dungeons and Dragons, Robert. On a scale of one to the birth of your son, how excited are you? Tied with birth. Oh, tied. tied. Straight up tied. Once you haven't seen the building, you already this know it's better like than This is like a new son. DM us into this thing. You kill the orc prince Golnar. You finally break into his tent. You see before you what looks like treasure. It's covered by a blue sheet. You pull it back to reveal. Ah! Holy cow. It's your very own Dungeons and Dragons gaming table made by the talented builders at Funko. This is an incredible table. This is very exciting. I'm very pleased. All right, let's, well, let's see. Let's take you through some of uh, what this thing features. OK, do it. Built into the top of the table is a 50-inch screen so that the DM can display all your maps. So you saw the script right here. Yes. This actually says master, because this is the dungeon master station. Ah, uh, OK. So as the dungeon master, you can change the maps on the screen, and you do it by like this. Ah, oh, okay. Kind of cool, right? Yes, very cool. I love it. Besides the DM station, there are five adventurer stations, and they are fully loaded. Each station is equipped with a tablet. All the players can message each other. So you got a little felt here they can roll dice on. Mm. Then, of course, a goblet holder, you know, to hold their mead. The table was handcrafted from stained birch wood, and the classic Dungeons & Dragons logo was laser cut. The... I love lasers. Lasers are the best. Yeah. And every station, of course, has this finely crafted chair with this classic Dungeons & Dragons logo on the seat cushion. This is incredible. It looks like it took an enormous amount of effort. The four legs of the table feature the Storm Giant King Hecaton battling a dragon. And it took over 200 hours for the builders to sculpt and paint them. So there's a lot of love. For I wonder how much more this is the coolest, the greatest table ever. Have done. It satisfies dreams I didn't even know I had. Better day than your, the birth of your child. Better now, better. I want oh. my wife to hear that. We're to camera. Better than the birth of my son, Sean. <laughs> this is now tops. Okay. So that guy's really enthusiastic about that table. <laughs> um, it was a cool table for sure. I wonder how much more they could have put or done with the table had they not spent 200 hours or an obscene amount of time making those su sweet table legs don't get me wrong but they're table legs i mean that that holds up a table that's just a four by four you know um i do like the idea i didn't do it with this although i could put in um uh electrical outlets with my table i didn't do that but that's besides the point I would check out Super Fan Bells just to see the other stuff they've done. It's really cool, as you saw. Monica Valentinelli, uh, a prolific creative writer with heavy involvement in all forms of D&D, from adventure writing to running uh, and playing games, is on the was on an episode of Dragon Talk. Uh, and then Matt Cernan and Chris Perkins talk about the Yawning Portal. Why is that important? We're going to get there. Right now, actually. Tales from the Yawning Portal. This was announced. This is the brand new releasing on April 4th, uh, worldwide, I guess, uh, or March 24th in your local game store. Tales from the Yawning Portal is... There's a video actually coming up that's going to do a great job explaining it, but it's the new book. It is a series of adventures that will take you from levels 1 to level 15. It is classic Dungeons & Dragons modules brought up and, you know, up-to-date for 5th edition. 
Um, it's not really a true campaign, but it's nice because you can slot them in and out of an existing campaign, um, use them to append a pre-written campaign, um, things like that. But uh, it's not a f it's not a crunch book like a Volo's Guide, and it's not a full pre-written game like a Storm King's Thunder. And we can click here, and we can see the actual uh, page for it. it's going to be fifty dollars. Um, and here are some of the adventures. Er, Against the Giants, Dead and Thay, Forge of Fury, Hidden Shrine of Tamakoan, Tamak. Chimochin? I don't know. We'll see. I'll have Mike Morales explain it in just a sec. Sunless Citadel, Tomb of Horrors, and White Blue Mountain. Uh, just this earlier this week, uh, they blew us away with a surprise move. Unearthed Arcana released the Artificer, not as a wizard subclass like we had seen uh, about two years ago at this point, but as its own standalone class. There's a video here on the channel for that as well, as well as a couple of updates where Sage Advice Answers cleared some things up. Luke Gygax, the son of Gary Gygax, was on this week's Dragon Talk to talk about Gary Khan in Lake Geneva. And Matt Cernick, Chris Perkins, talk about Black Staff and what that means and the various different Black Staffs, the actual staff, the title, the person, and all that good stuff. Um, a new Frost Giant's Fury of the Dungeons & Dragons comic. This is the one that has Minsk and Boo. Uh, it started off as a Tyranny of Dragons uh, series, and I went to Curse of Strahd and things like that, uh, which I should be... <laughs> I have to go pick up all my extra copies of the... I have a stack of comics waiting at the comic store, and I feel bad. So that will actually be in there as well. Icons of the Round Monster Menagerie 2 came out. That actually launched 10 days ago, and I was completely unaware. I feel... That I am slacking on that, guys. I need to go pick up a copy uh, of those to see what we got. But we have a couple of minis we can review here. Cobalt. Different Cobalts. Bugbears. Uh, Drow Elite Warrior. Elf Fighter. Warg. Hobgoblin. A couple of Hobgoblins. A Hippogriff. Planetar. Mind Flayers. Andra Sphinx. Gyno Sphinx. That's all we can see here. Perhaps... On the over here, we can maybe get a better list. There is the case incentive is the adventurer's camp case, which you can see is treasure chests. A sort uh, this is Curse of Straw related. This is Esmeralda's wagon, a couple of horses, and things like that. Um, see if we can pick up anything else. Looks like there's a black dragon. If we can see that on the side there, uh, boosters are fifteen dollars. An eight pack is one hundred and twenty-seven dollars. You might be able to find that cheaper if you look around. Um, what else do we see? Those are Storm Giants. Monster Menagerie 2. Oh, looks like a different kind. Maybe a Death Tyrant? Different kind of Beholder there. Mm, yeah. Young Black Dragon. Looks like there's a Tiefling Wizard or a Warlock on the back there. Um, yeah. So, new set of minis. I'll be picking up some. Guarantee it, and I'll be doing an unboxing for those. Uh, what else do we have here? Uh, Tales from the Owning Portal. We already talked about that. But, this is the video I wanted to show you guys. Uh, it is called Tales from the Owning Portal. And it's a collection of uh, seven of the most famous dungeons it from Dungeons & Dragons history. Um, and they're all collected in one hardcover book. Uh, and the idea behind it is not only do you want to capture some of the most famous dungeons uh, from the game's history, but we also wanted to give a selection of adventures that you could, in theory, start at level 1 with the first dungeon and play all, all, you, all the way up to level 15 by playing the adventures one after another. So we want a nice broad range of levels uh, to give DMs content they can drop into, into their campaigns, either to extend something, say if you finish Storm King's Thunder and your character's level 10 or 11, there's adventures in there that'll, that you can start playing, or if you just want something that's a little bit of a sidetrack from your current campaign. So the adventures span uh, almost every edition. Uh, the first two, for, lo for low-level characters, there's the Sunless Citadel and the Forge of Fury, and if you played uh, third edition, you might remember those as the first two adventures released for the 3.0 version of the game. Uh, when you get more to mid-levels, uh, we have a couple of adventures from, from AD&D. If you played back in the early 80s and late 70s, you might recognize some of these titles. There's uh, White Plume Mountain, there's um, Hidden Shrine of Timoachin, 
And then there's a newer adventure. Actually, we drew from the period sort of when we had announced 5th edition, we're doing playtests. Um, there's an adventure called Dead in the Fae, which featured this really huge dungeon. And everyone who played it thought the dungeon was great. Um, but it was kind of part of a broader campaign. So we decided to just take the dungeon from Dead in the Fae uh, and place that in this book. And it's this enormous sort of like madhouse built by, these, uh, the, by the Red Wizards of Fae. Um, so this kind of gives you a chance to, to dive into sort of a, a classic mad wizard's uh, dungeon. Um, so those are the ones that, that will take you through the mid-levels. And then the upper tiers of play, uh, we have two very classic adventures, two of my favorites. Uh, going back to AD&D, late 70s, we have the Collected Against the Giants. Uh, and then would also, to cap it off, uh, if your characters have made it to 13th, 14th level, uh, and hopefully you're not too attached to them because the final adventure in the collection is the Tomb of Horrors. Uh, the original and the deadliest dungeons ever made, uh, updated to, to 5th edition, as are all the adventures. So, one of the fun things about the adventure was we kind of thought, how do we come up with a reason for why all these adventures will be put in one place? And we thought we could just publish, you know, Adventure Compendium number one or something like that, and that would work. But we wanted to do something that was a little more interesting. So we thought to ourselves, you know, these adventures were originally placed in a variety of different settings in D&D's history. Some were in Greyhawk, some really weren't attached to a setting, some were in the realms. And so we thought, you know, if there's any place where you could go to hear stories of these dungeons, it'd be the Yawning Portal in, in Waterdeep, in the Forgotten Realms. And the idea is that, while well, obviously, you know, most people who go to the, the Yawning Portal are from natives of the Forgotten Realms, there are still sometimes either planar travelers or adventurers who've been to other worlds. Like, that's kind of where powerful adventures congregate and talk. And so, you know, kind of just like Morden Kanan spells have moved from world to world, so too have stories of these dungeons been told time and again across the different worlds of D&D. So the idea is that if you're an adventurer, like if you're in, in the Yawning Portal late at night, this might be the kind of story, like, you know, the tales of the uh, Tomb of Horrors or something like that. That'd be the kind of thing that if you can get Durnan, the, the, the barkeep of the Yawning Portal, actually get him to talk to you, he's not exactly the most friendly guy. Um, this might be the kind of story he'll, he'll tell you about. Either he's heard about it, or somehow maybe he's experienced it firsthand. But it's kind of this idea that the Yawning Portal is sort of, even across the different worlds of D&D, it's probably like one of the most known and most frequented places for adventurers of all stripes. Short of some place out, say, in the plains, like in, uh, in Sigil. With the artwork, what we did was we went back and all the adventures someone in the department had played. So what we tried to do was capture really uh, critical moments of the adventure, things that were really memorable, and either things that maybe there was art originally in the adventure that we could you know, update, or things that maybe hadn't been caught in art before that we wanted to feature. So for instance, um, there's one piece of art uh, in the Hidden Shrine of Timochin, you have the chance to play this like, sort of uh, ancient sport, that the, the, cult, the Aztec-inspired culture that built the tomb. Um, there's a, sort of a trap you can trigger where you have to play a game against like, you know, these spirits. And so that, for me, when I played through it, was a really memorable, cool part of the adventure. So we captured that in one of the new pieces of art, showing the ball, like when the trap activates, when the ball, there's a ball you have to sort of smack into a goal. It starts to levitate and float around. Um, and so we captured that. And that's what kind of the fun part about working on these adventures is, usually when you're making a new adventure, you have an idea based on the playtesters about what's interesting and iconic, but you are kind of guessing. With these adventures, since we already know, it's kind of fun to just go back and go, okay, we know this is one of the traps or NPCs that people will talk about, or people have talked about when they played it. So it made going through the art a little easier for us, rather than to try to figure out what we think would be cool or, or memorable. We know that ahead of time. So, and uh, having played through all, all these adventures, it's, it's fun being able to bring them to life uh, based on my memories of them and seeing them. So, you know, I keep using the word remaster, but that's how I kept thinking of it, you know, updating it to modern publishing standards. The book will be on store shelves on uh, April 4th. Thanks for watching. I'm Todd Kenner. You can follow me right here. So I didn't really speak much during that because I really didn't think I could say anything that Mike Merles wasn't going to say. I'm pumped. Um, I've never played any of those. I've heard about all of them, specifically Tomb of Horrors. I've heard ha horror stories about it, and I want to try. I'm curious how this is going to interface with the Adventurers League. Um, if they're going to be Adventurers League legal, or is it just going to be like other hard covers are handled that way? But I guess we'll see. Um, so Penny Arcade, uh, Acquisitions Incorporated. There is a, it looks like they're going to do a holiday special. Um, this was a week ago they posted this. I know technically the holiday season has come to uh, and gone, 
Uh, that's why we'd like to direct your attention to the Acquisitions Incorporated Holiday Special that's available today on Amazon. This is a brand new adventure run by the incredible Chris Perkins, featuring all player AI players Jerry Hawkins, Scott Kurtz, Patrick Rothfuss, and myself. Uh, if you're a Prime member, the show is free. If you're not, it'll run you $4.99. Um, the adventure starts in the sleepy town of Nightstone, just as their Dead Winter Festival is beginning. As you can imagine, things don't go as planned, and it's up to Omen, Jim, Viari, and Binwin to sort it out. Spells are cast, axes are spun, interns are abused, and I think I remember a chandelier or two. Um, so there you go. Speaking of Acquisitions Incorporated, I actually didn't grab a link to it, but I'll talk to it while I'm here. Um, AI is going to be at PAX South, which I believe is in a couple, two weeks from now, I think, and, uh, Friday night, turns out Binwin left AI, and he's heading to his own show. Friday night, there's gonna be a, it's, it's sort of up and running, getting started from what I saw, uh, from Scott Kurtz's, uh, webpage, but, um, he's gonna start his own show called Binwin's Minions, and I hear that they're going to be doing an introductory adventure Friday night at PAX South. And Chris Perkins is actually going to be DMing that adventure. Which means if Binwin left and started his own adventure, that means it's now Viari, uh, Omen, and Jim. Which means they're going to need another player. So we'll have to see who's going to fill in that fourth slot. I guess we'll see. Um... I'll play this as well. The uh, Dice Camera Action Season 2 trailer has released, which is Storm King's Thunder. I want to play. I want to play. I want to play in your d I want to play. I want to play. I want to play in your d So, there you go. It's starting, I believe, next week. Uh, and lastly, Dungeons & Dragons is going to be featured in Lootware at Loot Crate for this coming month. If you'd like to check it out, it's $15 a month. you got to fill out some information. This is Loot Crate's specific wearable section. Um, so there you go. Anyway, guys, I'm going to flip to this scene, and I really don't even know what I'm going to tell you is here because it's been so long. So, know your role. The primary campaign, as we know, is done. You can check out... I'll probably link Out of the Abyss Episode 7 here because Episode 8 will be coming up this Tuesday. Uh, we also have our Horde of the Dragon Queen campaign. That is every other... I'll probably switch up these videos. Um, uh, this actual end card. <laughs> but we have a Horde of the Dragon Queen campaign that happens every other Monday. And we are going to be publishing some Horde of the Dragon Queen... I'm not Horde of the Dragon Queen. Curse of Strahd videos soon. We've been recording that. Uh, due to requests from players, uh, from our players, uh, the DM, <laughs> the DM's mom, uh, as well as some fans, uh, you guys want to see it go to a live stream so you can watch as we play, well, we're going to grant you that wish. We are going to go to a live stream, um, but I have to go through and edit all of the existing Curse of Strahd content that we've done to catch you all up so you don't start in with the characters being level 3 and you don't know what happened, um... So yeah, um, as far as what had happened in the past regarding the Kickstarter Spotlight, I will tell you as I go and look it up. The video that I'll throw up here is going to be... Uh, well, I will tell you I'm going to be getting back on track with doing uh, DM's Guild Spotlights and Kickstarter Spotlights. I have a couple of requests um, from some folks who did some homebrew... Uh, a Hobo Ranger, as well as a fairly lethal uh, dungeon from the folks over at Total Party Kill Games. They would like me to do a review of Slaughter at the Splinterfang Gorge. Slaughter at Splinterfang Gorge, which I will be doing. Um, I was hoping to get that done before this video came out, but it is a 75-page module, so I need to really go through and read it, and I don't want to 
not do it justice. The last Kickstarter spotlight, which you'll probably see there, is the effing cool minis Kickstarter, and the Spellbinder class was the DM's Guild spotlight. I will be getting back on track with that, as well as trying to have these come out weekly. Uh, be on the lookout for a Dragon Plus December article coming out. Uh, the next one will be coming out in February. The, uh, the video will cover Dragon Plus in December. By the way, I didn't mention that. Dragon Plus, uh, the next issue came out in early December. I'll be doing a review on that as well. And make sure you stay here. You can click down below, right below me, to subscribe. Um, that way you can stay up to date. Also, if you guys click, there's a little bell option um, when you click on one of our videos to click notify. It's a new thing with YouTube. I'm sure you've heard it from a million other content creators. But if you want to stay up to date on everything we're doing, click subscribe, but also click that little bell to be notified of everything that we do. Um, if I don't put out content frequently enough or it doesn't get as many likes or views or things like that, it's possible that I'm still putting out videos, but it won't show up in your YouTube subscriber feed. You'll just... It'll disappear unless you click that little notification that'll guarantee that you uh, you see all the updates. So um, Anyway, as a little bit, last little final update, uh, I hope you guys all had a great holiday. I hope your 2017 is going, uh, is going well. Um, we have done a, a, a fair few updates to um, the Twitch channel. We added a currency system, if you're unfamiliar, um, where you can use, you can gain these currency just by watching our videos and following and things like that. And the currency can be used to uh, purchase, it's free to earn the currency, to purchase things to alter the game, whether it be trinkets or advantage on rolls or natural 20s or things like that. There's also an IRL money donations, but obviously you don't have to feel obligated. And if you spend time enough watching the channel, you'll get the currency and you can use that to, you know, like I said, buy trinkets, rename NPCs, you name it. Um... So that's worth checking out, and we are working on a custom set of critical hit, critical miss tables to employ into the game, uh, which will only be accessible via uh, some form of donation, which we're still narrowing down. Um, yeah, so anyway guys, if you were at MAGFest and I saw slash played with you at MAGFest, uh, I hope that you guys had fun. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I just... I look forward to a lot of good stuff coming in 2017. Um, I may have a little bit of a break in the beginning of February with, with the birth of my son, but I promise I'll be back as soon as I can, providing as much content as possible. So, anyway guys, thanks for all the support through the years, um, and I just, I'm glad to see that more, you know, the outreach of the channel is reaching more people, and everybody seems to be fairly receptive to it, so. Thanks again, guys. I really appreciate it. I'll see you next time.